In a recent video, I had stumbled across an old abandoned mill. And in my last video, I talked about the history of that mill and how it was a cornerstone for this here town of Randleman. Well, in that research, I stumbled upon an interesting legend that I would like to share with you right now. Legend of Naomi Wise The legend of Naomi Wise is based on her murder, which occurred in April of 1808 by her accused lover, Jonathan Lewis. Naomi was a young orphan girl who lived with Squire William Adams and his wife Mary in New Salem, which is just north of Randleman. While working for the Adams, Naomi met Jonathan Lewis, who lived a few miles away, and he passed by her house all the time on his way to Ashboro, where he went to work for a rich, wealthy storekeeper named Benjamin Elliot. Now, the Adams had warned her about Elliot. Uh, while good looking and dashing, Jonathan was said to have had a temper and sometimes lacked stability, and he was said to have come from a powerful, unruly family. However, Naomi was taken under a spell and she fell in love with him and she also was under, under the impression that he felt the same way, that he loved her as well. Now taking advantage of Naomi's innocence, Lewis lured her, lured her into a relationship in which she became pregnant. But in the meantime, he was seeing his employer's sister, Hetty Elliott, and tried to establish a relationship with her as well. The Elliot family was a wealthy family, and Jonathan saw an opportunity for advancement. But, when he found out that Naomi was pregnant, he kind of figured that his chances were ruined. So, under the guise of promising Naomi marriage and wealth, he asked her to meet him at the Adams Spring late one evening, and they would be married and she would not be disgraced. Now, back in those times, if you were pregnant and not married, that was a disgrace. So she got excited, you know, hey, we're going to get married. On that evening, Naomi went to the spring and met Jonathan, and they proceeded to ride towards Randleman. They arrived at Deep River Ford, and Lewis started across. But in midstream, he paused. He looked Naomi in the face and said, You're such a fool for believing that I would marry you. And with those words, he pushed her into the water and violently drowned her. The next morning, when Mr. Adams realized that Naomi wasn't anywhere to be found, he threw together a search party. And they went down to the spring and they followed the horse tracks. And right there at below the river ford is where they found her beaten pregnant body and they dragged her to shore. The suspicions immediately turned towards Jonathan as the murderer. Lewis was captured and brought to the river for inquest and pronounced guilty. He was indicted and jailed for the murder of Naomi, but soon thereafter he escaped jail and fled westward to Kentucky, where he seemed to have gotten away. Several, several years later, though, he was found and brought back to stand trial. But that time, by that time, many of the witnesses had died or moved away, so there wasn't sufficient evidence to convict him. But on Jonathan Lewis's deathbed, it was said that her apparition visited Jonathan and tormented him and put him through all this anguish and before he could draw his last breath, he finally, um, he finally confessed to this murder. The Naomi Wise Ballad 
is said to be North Carolina's principal single contribution to American balladry based on its distribution and dissem dissemination, dissemination, thus making Naomi and her death one of North Carolina's best known folk ballads. According to the lore, the folk ballad was written shortly after her murder. One legend said it was the singing of the ballad a few years after her death that made people notice a man acting peculiar and upon discovering it was Jonathan Lewis, that led to his rearrest. Now, uh, her burial back in those days was quite controversial because, uh, you know, nobody wanted to bury her with her circumstances, being pregnant out of wedlock, except for one church, Providence Friends Home. It's a Quaker meeting place, took her in, and that's where she rests today. Now, uh, a lot of locals still talk about her murder. And uh, some of them say that at night she could sometimes be heard crying along the banks of the river that she died. Oh, listen to my story, I'll tell you no lie. How John Lewis did murder poor little old me wife. He told her to meet him at Adam's Springs. He promised her money and other fine things. So fool like she met him at Adam's Springs. No money he brought her nor other fine things. Go with me, little old.
and brought her out before him so he might see her face. He made no confession, but they carried him to jail. No friends or